Hello and welcome to Sick Notes. My name's Ed Hope. I'm a junior doctor in the UK and to celebrate the release of Avengers Endgame, I'm going to be revisiting a bunch of the medical science from all the films from the MCU. We did Iron Man last time, the very first one. And now next up, <laughs> often forgotten about, it's the Incredible Hulk. So we see Bruce Banner here trying to do some research, try and figure out how he can cure himself from the Hulk. And we see him take some blood here and bam, under the microscope, we see some erythrocytes, so some red blood cells in there. We know they're red blood cells because we see they're biconcave disc shaped, so basically a squashed donut. And we see the experiment isn't going very well because these red blood cells sort of swell up and turn green, turn sort of very hulky. That's not a medical term. This one's not really a Hulk origin story, but the idea is that he was exposed to gamma radiation. Quite why they were firing that at him. I don't know what they expected. Gamma radiation is an electromagnetic wave. So we have visible light, then we have ultraviolet light, then we have X-rays, then we have gamma rays. So it's the shortest wavelength of electromagnetic wave. Gamma rays are actually part of the background radiation that our bodies are exposed to all the time. And they normally just travel through us and in small doses, don't give us a problem. Whereas if we get exposed to a significant amount, so why Bruce Banner did in the lab, then it can actually damage our cells as we go through what we call acute radiation syndrome or radiation poisoning. The radiation damages your DNA, so your ability to make new cells properly. And we you get symptoms in the brain, in the gut, um, and also in the bone marrow, so where your cells of your blood are made. And if you don't die of radiation poisoning in the long term because you've got this damage to the DNA, you're more likely to create abnormal cells which can turn cancerous. So you get an increased risk of cancer with significant radiation exposure. So there is some kind of theory behind Hulk. He's had this damage to the DNA from the gamma radiation and loads of energy given to him as well that he's kind of storing up in his cell somehow. Um, I mean, it's sound from a science fiction point of view, but don't try this at home. You'd just get acute radiation sickness and probably die. Target's on the move. Okay, so we see this commando group headed up by Tim Roth here that's on the lookout for Bruce. And we see the, this a lot in action movies, actually. They're using tranquilizer darts, but these have a problem in reality. For a start, the drugs wouldn't work that quickly. So if you shoot someone with it, they're still not going to be immobilized for maybe a couple minutes. So the target would still be a threat to you. Also, the dosage of these drugs is very varied. So one drug that won't knock someone out at all might actually render someone completely unconscious and maybe even kill them. So that's why you wouldn't know which dose basically to fire at someone either. You'll get two separate infusions, one into the deep muscle, one into the bone marrow centers. Bone ones are gonna hurt. <laughs> So they say they're gonna do an infusion into the deep muscle, but then they give an injection into the neck. Not a good place to try and find muscles, or it looks like they've gone for the sternocleidomastoid muscle, so originates just below uh, the ear and connects to the collarbone, but that's a very small muscle group compared to other muscles in the body. So we'd normally go for something like the deltoid, you know, as you know, whenever you've had your immunizations done. And they use a really long needle as well. So probably they've way overshot the muscle, probably gone into some of the soft tissues of the throat. Okay, so we see here they're injecting the serum into the bone marrow of one of the vertebra in the back. So one of the bones of the back to remind you the bone marrow is where all the cells of the blood are created. It's actually the central part of the bones. They're quite an active thing. You think they're, you know, just for stability, but they're actually a very important part um, of creating blood cells in your body. The vertebra, so the bones in the back are a really significant part of the bone marrow of the body, but so too are the pelvis. So and that's slightly more accessible. So we'd probably use any kind of biopsies or anything we need to do with the bone marrow would actually go via the pelvis rather than the vertebra. 
So Tim Roth's initial injection of the serum didn't help him too much after his entanglement with the Hulk, so he ends up in hospital. Will he ever walk again? Most of the bones in his body look like crushed gravel right now. So we hear he's had multiple broken bones and we see these external fixations. So these metal rods that go through the bones to keep them in place and they're connected to an external frame to make sure they heal in the best possible place. We saw a very similar scene to this in my review of Doctor Strange. And they've also gone to some nice detail here. They show a tracheostomy or tracheotomy. So there's probably been significant trauma to the throat causing it to swell, meaning we have to put a tube directly into the windpipe to make sure we can get air in and out of the lungs. We have begun. The dialysis machine will mix the antidote with your blood. So if the antidote will only take hold, so basically, Mr. Green, the Hulk, meets up with Mr. Blue to help try and treat uh, the condition, to try and get rid of the Hulk. And we find out they're using a dialysis machine, so this is what we call a form of renal replacement therapy. So when people's kidneys no longer work, we have to do the job of the kidneys. One of them is cleaning the blood, so we have to have a machine that actually processes the blood and cleans it and puts it back into the patient. So that's what they say they're using, a dialysis machine here. Quite why the drug needs to be mixed with a dialysis machine rather than just put straight into the body. I'm not too sure. They seem to know what they're doing. So there you have it, my thoughts on the medical science behind Hulk. If you enjoyed this, I did a video on Iron Man before and a video on Doctor Strange, so you can check that out. And I'm gonna continue to work through the MCU. As I said, I've already done all the films in the phase one, so subscribe and you'll be notified as soon as I release them. A few thank yous to my mate Callum, big Marvel fan who sent me a bunch of ideas for this video. He's got a channel as well, which I'll link to below. He does visual essays, including stuff about Marvel. And a big thank you to a few of my doctor colleagues that helped me watch these films and we threw ideas around as well. That's Dr. Tom, Dr. James, Dr. Jake. Really appreciate it, thank you guys. And as always, to the real superheroes, you guys for being part of this channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much and I'll see you soon.